Hey, hey, what do you say? Terry Caliendo, Dedicated Manager, is back again. Um, let's see, where are we? We've done a lot of work so far. I'm not going to go through all this again because it's got to be getting boring at this point. Uh, but basically, we've set up a project, uh, shown a bunch of things, and uh, started getting into the implementation in the last video where we actually talked about the Auth0 side of setting up the, um, the, the project. So now we're going to dig into code a little bit. Um, we're going to need to, within our application, I showed this in the last video, so if you don't know what, I'm, what you're seeing here, go back to the last video. We get into our, uh, our tenant for the, for the project, the application, and uh, we're going to get our credentials here. Now, the amazing thing that I love about Vue CLI 3 is that it implements environment variables. And this is awesome because you can load different variables based on uh, what you're currently doing, what, what, how you're saving your project or how you're running your project. So there's by default, there's a development, a production, and a test uh, um, um, environments. And so your environment variables will be load based on, on how you are, are compiling at the time. And so we'll get into that in a second. But the first thing to, to look at is we're going to create some, some .env files in our project. So if I open the right window here, here is our project. And we've talked about this before. And this is our, our setup here. And so at the project level, which is this main level here, we want to add a new file, and we're going to add a .env file. And then we can add a .env.development, development, and a .env.production. Now, the variables within these files, the, the .env file will always be loaded. The development file will be uh, loaded when we run npm uh, run serve. At least I think that's the command. Uh, hopefully I'm not re remembering that uh, backwards. And uh, the production, which I spelled wrong, p-r-o-d-u-c-t-i-o-n, is run when we do npm uh, run build. So this way, if we had an auth0 application, um, let's say we had one application that was our production application that had you know users running on it and, and was live, we could create a second application here by just creating another application, mirror the settings, but that second application we could put those credentials in the um, in the, the the development environment variables, um, so that uh, you know that different we're not interacting with the the live website when we're doing you know uh, testing locally. So I'll kind of show that real quick in, in here. But the first thing we need to do is go back and get those uh, those, those credentials. So let's get back in here and let's get the credentials here. And we'll paste them into our application. I'll set this up in a second. I just want to get them in here. So there they are there. And now we simply need to give it a variable name. And it has to start with view underscore app uh, underscore. Uh, if you don't start it with that, your application won't be able to see it. I don't know why they, they need that, but um, um, that is required. Uh, so I'm going to call this variable the auth config domain and here I'm going to call this one the auth, code, auth config client ID. And so I would save that and then you know, in the production, oops, I would take these parameters 
put it in the production, but I, if I had my auth, um, you know, I, I would have a different client ID for my different app and, and it would have a different tenant or domain name. Uh, no, it wouldn't have a different uh, tenant. It would have a different domain name. And so I might call this auth zero dash production. If I was to set that up in the, you know, the, the auth zero interface side, that would be my second application and there'd be some key here that went with that application. So now if I, if I do NPN run build, the the very this these two variables are going to load these settings but if i do npm run uh serve it's going to load the development environment variable so that's what's cool is you know you can interact with two different uh two different auth0 interfaces um production and non-production and, and so you don't screw up your production environment when you're playing around so we don't need to do this um so I'm not going to necessarily need to do that. I'm just going to put it in the .env file because I'm, I'm doing the same right now. I'm not doing a production actually in this. So I'll just put those, these variables in the .env. That gets, the .env gets loaded no matter what. So uh, it doesn't matter if we're in the development or the production, this one gets loaded. So I'm just going to put it in there, save it. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I'll save that file empty, and then uh, I'll save this file empty as well. But uh, just know that there's there's nothing in there. So um, that is the environment variables. So that is how to um, to configure the variables. Now let's talk about how to actually use those variables. So real quick, just to show how they're used, let's just go into the main app dot view here, and um, this is the you know the configuration page. And just right here in the uh, the data object here. Let's return client ID and set that equal to this variable, which is, you go and look this up, the process.env, that is how you refer to your, your variable, and um, then you tag on your variable name. So this right here is just my variable name. So if I grab this right there and I tag it on at the end of there, and then put process.env. This is a uh, um, whoops. This is a global variable that um, Vue.js gives you to to access those variables. So that's our data function. That's going to bring this into going to bring our you know our our environment variable locally into this ID. And then if we just want to show it, I'll just throw it up here, and we'll do client ID up here. And I've built the test environment. And loaded it so that compiled successfully let's go take a look and there it is it's just sh it's showing up at the top of the page there so if I um, let's see if I let's say I change this variable to the other one there it is I'll save it and so now we should get the the other variable showing up there at the top so we can we can call those environment variables um, and and they'll output there. And again, if I was if I was on a production server where I had built my my code into a, um, a, a production, and there, it was in the um, the distribution folder that gets created here, which we'll talk about at some point, maybe um, you know that will then use the other environment variables from the um, from the production side. So again, I put the I put the variables in the env, so they'll be loaded no matter what in either case the same way. So that's a quick primer on how we're going to uh, get those auth zero uh, variables into our project and uh, and use them uh, as environment variables. So let's, uh, let's call that the end of the video and sign out here. Again, Terry Caliendo, Dedicated Managers. If you need any professional help, contact us at the website. Um, glad to help you out in any way we can. And uh, please subscribe to the website. Click that subscribe button. Makes me do a little dance. Uh, maybe I'll record one at some point if I get enough subscribes. Uh, or hit like on the video if you like the video. I love likes too. Uh, or comment. All that stuff uh, makes my, gives me a lot of motiva motivation to keep going uh, uh, beyond uh, beyond what uh, uh, yeah just it just gives me a lot of motivation. So thanks a lot again, Terry Kelly. I know dedicated managers signing out. Have a great day. Keep coding. Stay strong. All that good stuff.